It's a huge honor, pleasure to present to you your president, Rebecca Minter. Put a lot of time into this, and it's been an incredible experience uh, learning about this truly remarkable woman. And it's a real fun thing to dive into someone's life and trying to track it uh, over time. But uh, I've learned so much about Rebecca working with her this year, uh, and I have the utmost respect for her. And I'd like to take you through a journey uh, of her life uh, to this point. Well, the beginning was Rapid City, South Dakota. South Dakota's uh, state motto ought to be, we make pancreas surgeons. <laughs> Keith? Uh, here comes Rebecca out of the front door of her igloo, her first home, and apparently started her adventurous life in the outdoors in this toboggan. Now, the next stage after birth was very tumultuous. She was the daughter of an Air Force, um, uh, a member of the Air Force, and I, I don't want to call her an Air Force brat. I don't like that idea, but that's the term uh, for this. But what you learn from these people is they are extremely friendly, they're very adaptable, they get along with people very well, and uh, they're highly favored. And I think that this you know, formed the basis of how she is at this point in time. She might as well have been in the, in the Navy because she went to a number of stops along the way, all having to do with water, uh, rapids, springs, falls, these various cities along the way. Uh, but this, uh, I'm going to uh, help you understand this map here. It's going to be your GPS for her life as we go through the talk here. Very, very busy from the very outset. I have received a lot of pictures of Rebecca, a ton of them, maybe a hundred of them, to work from uh, for this. And this one really was my favorite of them all. Sort of see a, a devilish, sort of impish smile here. Probably describes who she was going back to the beginning when, in fact, she was the devil. She didn't get the message, however, that the, that the devil's favorite number is six. And apparently she was a very happy, nice devil with a bow on her tail. But unfortunately, this continued through, and we uh, thought that she might be actually possessed as she grew up. But in fact, she found salvation through the church lady. <laughs> now, after this phase, it was the 80s. And uh, she failed to win out on the flash dance uh, uh, role. But uh, she practiced hard, continued going, and was able to land the lead role opposite John Travolta in physical. Then she went on to be a US national champion in ice skating. Not really. However, we're very happy to have her back from the Academy Awards this week where I, Tanya, took place and she partook in this. And if you think of this as a bit of a stretch, I'd like you to see Rebecca at that point and Tanya Harding at that point. <laughs> right on with the 80s. She was a real prodigy. She graduated high school at five years old. And then went on to lead a normal girl's life at that point in time. So here's this beautiful smile again. Again, a little bit devilish in the eye. Sean Cassidy, uh, fan club leader. Here she is, a very hip roller skater. And then it turns out she actually was a state champion in something called Barebo. I understand there were only two or three contestants in the state. <laughs> but dead eye with her target, with her aim. And we see down here uh, her uh, lovely sister, who really um, glows about her sister, uh, Rebecca, and how close they are and what a confidant they've uh, been to each other throughout their life, Sarah. Uh, Rebecca is a real animal lover. In fact, one of her first uh, uh, ambitions was to become a veterinarian. And her beloved uh, Romeo uh, is shown here, as well as a kitten. Uh, then she went into an uh, adventurous daredevil stage, and she has a real affinity for waterfalls. Uh, I'm told that at a very early age, she was part of an expedition where she was asked to go do some exploration and trespassed across some fences and found her way onto a waterfall and barely survived it, is how I was told. 
nonetheless, I guess that emboldened her and she continues to explore the great outdoors um, and is actually into skydiving as we see here too as well. She did actually get to high school at some point and I think this is just an absolutely beautiful picture and is uh, you know, very emblem emblematic of the time but uh, this is uh, how, what she developed into by the end of high school. And then it was time to move on, so back to our GPS system. So we're going to continue to follow her path uh, along the way here. University of Denver, where she was a magna cum laude graduate in skiing, apparently. Uh, again, really love the outdoors. I don't know if you went to Denver because you could ski. I don't, I don't know, but this apparently was uh, uh, how she spent a lot of her time. This then led her down to medical school in Dallas, uh, Texas at UT Southwestern. Here's a graduation picture from there, uh, very accomplished there. And then uh, this uh, represented her, uh, I believe this is your medical school graduation picture, where you see all these elements put together, the athleticism, the outdoors, a great uh, skier, uh, water skier. Um, but we see this troubling uh, situation here with um, alcoholism becoming part of her, her problem at that time, and uh, she's been called a wine aficionado, uh, kindly, by others, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how she likes her wine over time. <laughs> this now took her to uh, Gator Country in the University of Florida. Here she is as a, um, a resident with some various uh, esteemed people, Bill Kantz and Ted Copeland, Tim Flynn, who had a very big influence on her uh, at that point in time. So we see uh, this uh, journey is really developing here. But while, she, while there, she also became a model. And uh, she was the cover girl here for the AAMC um, manual. Uh, and uh, very fittingly, I think this kicked off your education career uh, in association with that. Um, then, uh, starting to, to become a grown up here, she was uh, married here to uh, John Reckenwald in Austin, Texas in 1999. Um, can our Canadians name the honeymoon spot? Lake Louise is where they honeymooned. Uh, then on to Michigan. And uh, this is uh, where she developed her career and her family life. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I believe, from her cottage up on Lake Huron, a very uh, beautiful getaway that is very dear to their family. Uh, Mike Mulholland, very esteemed chairman at, at Michigan, helped me out a lot with this. And he basically you know, told me this Rebecca was an incredible find and uh, he was right on, uh, spot on with that uh, in what he had because she really worked hard in those early years to make uh, her name and her stature. This is also the time uh, where she really dove into her family life, uh, first marrying John, here they are again uh, on the lake, and then moving on to become an awesome mom. And I can't tell you, uh, you know, f maybe 50 people helped me with this talk Everyone talked about her motherhood, her devotion to the kids, uh, being a, a coach and a proctor for the kids for their activities, being a, taking them to state activities together. Um, and it's just really, what a great looking family. And, and she's done a fantastic job with Jack, Matthew, and Kate. She then went down to Texas for a drink of water for a couple of years, uh, back to a place she was very familiar with uh, and this allowed her to advance her leadership skills and she became the division head and took a lot, lot of responsibility on in a very short period of time and life was really revving up. Uh, I was able to get this um, insight from her uh, administrator at uh, UT Southwest. If you want something uh, done, ask a busy person to do it. The more things you do, the more you can do and that's what Lucille Ball postulated and she said Rebecca was immediately who I thought of. She really does accomplish more than most of us. Her family, her work is truly remarkable, and yet she is no martyr. She is humble, expresses gratitude, admits her failings, and becomes all the more brilliant for them. And uh, any of, uh, of you who know her know that is, just rings so true. And right now we're on to a new frontier in Wisconsin. So just within a couple of months ago, a major upheaval, a big move to a new home, and I'd be remiss without bringing up uh, the um, very important uh, contribution of Grandma Lucy. This is John's mother, 
who has lived with them uh, and been such an important part of the upbringing of the family uh, and an adjunct to this dual physician um, uh, couple. Here she is as soon as they got there. Uh, it was apparently minus 30 something with wind chill uh, on the first days there and they just had to acclimate and uh, went out and bought all the hats to get ready there. Now also while in Wisconsin, uh, they bought a new home and um, you know, one of the most important things to do and figure out there was what would the ring uh, doorbell ring sound be like and they chose a novelty doorbell for that. Uh, and anything, anything could have gone down, it could have been the uh, Laverne and Shirley theme, it could have been the 70s uh, show theme, but instead it's the Oscar Mayer Wiener song. We'll need some explanation and update on that in your talk. Let's get serious now. All of this uh, led us to an incredibly prolific and uh, skilled uh, surgeon and leader. Uh, Rebecca's been everywhere. Uh, she in, uh, has so many invited presentations uh, based on a core of excellent scientific uh, intrigue over the years uh, and publications along the way. She's been the president of the Yes US our president, the fellowship council chair in a, you know, an important time in that development, and she's a, a member of the American Surgical, and these are just the highest of the accolades I could tell you about. In specific, her contributions to HPB, uh, again, the fellowship chair, council chair, and you'll see two elements of the ENT committees, uh, education training, both with us as, and well as the international group, and this is what she is. She's an educator. She's uh, just the, the paragon for that in our field. And I can tell you, you do not become president of this organization without the sweat equity put into it and credibility. And this is, is where she uh, made, got her legs and traction in this society to get to this point. She then, of course, was in the upper leadership, secretary, president-elect, and now the president. Here's some things said by her um, colleagues along the way. She's a visionary when it comes to a surgical education eager to reach out to colleagues and collaborators to expand this enthusiasm. Um, again, Michael Mulholland, it's, it's pretty humbling when your chair, who's very accomplished, comes out and says, I learned a lot from her about talent development and education reform. I think this was a very um, a beautiful relationship when you were there with him. So some further testimonials, very uh, telling. So this is from her dad. There are lots of great surgeons, administrators, detail people, big picture people, and team players, but very few that are all of these. Becky is one of the few. I think she just might have a career in medicine. <laughs> yep, true. Um, uh, a very uh, thoughtful uh, member of our organization, Joe Hines. Uh, what distinguishes Rebecca is her humanity. The house of surgery will be well served by mirroring le leaders like Rebecca, and they are. She is uh, developing a uh, real cadre of people following in her uh, paths, uh, mirroring her behavior. I think one of her main attributes is her leadership style. She can be a leader without creating distance from the people she leads. And that's from her uh, close friend Patricio uh, and, and Dallas. Here she is, the leader uh, at one of the major educational uh, summits, you know, pointing the way, uh, receiving the um, uh, recognition for leading the fellowship council and here she is front and center leading us and, and it's been an incredible path over the last few years. Now as if that wasn't enough, she's a journal editor. This has taken her to Edinburgh I don't know how many times, five, six in the last, yeah. So m multiply times five to add to our, our um, uh, map here. Um, and really uh, has uh, helped the American influence on, on this international journal. Beyond that, an ambassador to South America, part of our job at the executive leadership has been to um, promote and the growth of our South American aspects. And I understand that Rebecca has been a beautiful diplomat down here multiple times, uh, sometimes under physical duress, and uh, she's uh, uh, had great comportment in this job as well. So, one of our best, dearest friends, we all know Roham, here's what he told us. She's a fantastic friend, a talented pancreas surgeon, she's a finisher, she can really close a deal. Their relationship's great because Rohan's a big visionary and Rebecca is the enactment arm. Uh, she's clearly devoted to the husband and kids. 
And she's especially fond, as only Rona, Rohan could tell us, of Kate Spade shawls. I don't know what this is. <laughs> and now a, a beautiful suit phase. So, Rohan, I ask you, can you interpret this? <laughs> is this what you're talking about? <laughs> All righty. All along the way, despite all these accolades, uh, Rebecca has just been one of the girls. And you know, most of the pictures I have are Rebecca amongst a uh, cadre of her uh, friends. Uh, and she's always got the big smile. She's the catalyst of this group, of these groups, and always um, you know, in the mix with this. And this is what she's so beloved for. Uh, she's also a bit of a party girl along the way. This started really early here with her dad. Um, this is uh, Brazil uh, at the Samba Festival. Uh, sadly, I have pictures like this too. <laughs> Probably going to come up next year. Um, so on some of the uh, amb ambassador trips to the South America. This is her running tumor board, apparently. <laughs> uh, I think one of the kids had a birthday party that day and she had to you know, maximize time. Um, apparently beyond the um, wine uh, taste of beer is big. That's a lot of beer, Rebecca. That's a lot of beer. So uh, she really does enjoy things. It goes along with her uh, effervescent smile. I'm going to wrap up here by just telling you about last year, or this year, uh, president of the HPBA, past president of the SUS, going to MBA school at the University of Texas, moved her family, and became the chair and I understand now she's looking to establish a PAC for a 2018 midterm senatorial candidacy from Wisconsin. Just wasn't enough. How does she pull all this off? Well, it's magic. Here she is with her best friend, David Copperfield, who makes it all happen for her. So to summarize, Rebecca is a friend, a wife, a mother, a world traveler, doyen, pioneer, catalyst, ambassador, leader, and your president. It's my great pleasure to welcome Rebecca to the stage.